back to Estate Agency Mastery. I am super excited to be joined by Isabella Rapadska. I'm not sure if I said that right or not. Yeah, <laughs> um, why am I excited? Because you have a unique strategy we're going to dive into, but you've been doing agency for 15 years. From a lettings background, you learned sales in Dubai, and we've had a conversation offline, and a lot of what you do makes absolute sense, and I really, really like it. But before we go into the three tips... What is it you do differently? Tell our, our listeners what you do that, that, say, most agents would never dream of doing. Well, I don't know if they never dream of doing it, but I basically decided that I just want to work with one client at a time. So the same way as, you know, we have sole agency, you know, I wanted to have sole client. So yeah. my whole focus goes to one client and I sell houses in one week. So I think that's uh, what makes me different because I only look after one person each time, which obviously other agents, I don't think they can afford doing that. There's there's so much in that that must be great. But on the valuation, how does that go down? Is it almost like, hey, I can fit you in in three weeks time or how does that work? Yeah, so people who know me will know that I am a big um, believer on manifestation and I'm testing the universe all the time. And uh, when I started in lockdown, I just really wanted to have a business model that works for me, right? So it was very important um, to design this first in my head to see it and then see if I can make it happen. And the idea was to have people actually waiting for me to list rather than me having to go and knock at doors and convince people that I am the right agent for them. Because I don't believe that we can spend 15 years or 10 or five mastering our skills and then still having to knock people's door and ask for business. So uh, I thought, you know, when you do something really good, uh, people will come and find you. And that was my concept when I designed this business. I wanted to people to come and find me. I like it. Valuation, answering your question, I'm very, very um, selective because I would say probably 90% of my business comes through a word of mouth. So it's it's a different cherry picking. Um, yeah, yeah, really, really good book called Full Fee Agent. I'm not sure if you've read it. What, what's it called? Uh, full fee agent i'll put i'll put a link in the show notes okay. to share it with you after but it basically says if you if you're getting referred and it's referral and recommendation you can ultimately charge what you want and you know you're going to win that vow right um as opposed to like you say a cold door knock where you've really got to prove your your worth so okay love it so on that basis and m most agents now this is, this is going to be crazy uh, but what are your three tips so whether you're in birmingham belfast bognor regis what three tips can we take from you today Okay, so, you know, my, um, how to say this, advantage, I think, is the fact that I used to work with like an online, um, everyone knows like Express State Agency, you know, we, we I was a valuer and I also trained valuer across the country. So my advantage is the fact that I've learned the market in the entire country, including Scotland, Northern Ireland. So, you know, I don't believe that, the market is different in, in different areas. The market is the way it is for that particular area, but it's exactly the same for everybody, if that makes sense. So my, one of the first step is preparation. So I sell a lot of houses out of area. So, you know, before I even commit to a client that I want to sell their house, I will do research. So preparation versus research, 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 like understanding the area, understanding the market, understanding the buyers, you know, who is coming to this area, what they're looking for. So that really, that preparation is number one key for me. Okay. And how does that, so you turn, you, you know, everything, right? Price per square foot, what the last house on the street sold for, um, who the, the local schools that people are buying, the catchment, all of that. And, and how do you utilize that to your advantage? So, you know, I believe that to get the clients the best offer, I need to make sure that when my buyers leave the appointment at my viewing, 
they cannot have a question. I always say that my last buyer have the best experience because if there is a question that I wasn't prepared for, which is very annoying, uh, I will always, you know, find out on the open day. So by the end of the day, I will have like all the answers for them. Um, so for me, it, it, you know, it really depends on what you kind of have to think. If you look at an area and each house is different, there will be different questions for different properties, right? Um, so it's just, you know, getting your head around and putting yourself in the buyer's shoes and just kind of trying to understand what would they want to know, not what you want to tell them or what the sellers, you know, want to tell them, but what is really important for them to know and also what they would like to know. That's yeah. so good. I'm reading um, Mauricio Umansky's book from the agency. He's done like buying Beverly Hills and stuff at the moment. And he talks about the one time he got caught out and the guy, he didn't know what stuff sold for. And he was like, I'm never letting that have a, happen yeah. again. Right? It's and so it's, embarrassing. Yeah, it sounds it's very like the worst thing. <laughs> I, saw, I saw an Instagram the other day story of a girl. She was like, yeah, you should become an estate agent. It's great. People ask you questions. You tell them you'll get back to them. You never do. But it's great. They give you a mini. And it's it's so true. Like that whole, you know, what heating is it? When was the boiler last set? All of that. Oh, yeah, everything. Like, you know, a lot of the times it's like, oh, what, what's the underfloor heating? And you, you is it water? Is it electric? You know, this this is it's I tell you an idea. Like I used to um been in relationship with someone who was um a, a, a waiter and he used to um studying and and you know um work in this restaurant and they used to have exams, like, I don't know, I can't remember now because years ago, but like every three months. And basically what that meant when he was at the table and the the client asking, you know, what's in the sauce or is this wine goes with this meal? He couldn't just say like, oh, wait in a second, I'll go and ask yeah. the chef. Like, no, he had to know all the answers, all the allergies, everything. But I remember I was also a waitress at the time because it was recession. I've lost my business. I had to, I, I worked in a different type of restaurant, not so high end. And he, I used to have to do like, I don't know, 20 or 30 tables. And he only did like five to make the same money. And this is where my concept come like, you know, knowledge is power. The more you know with that buyer, the more impressed there are. And then the more value they're adding into the property. I really like it, right? And that sounds so good. So I don't just tr put your house online. I literally know. One of my lines I think we use is, or th I've used previously, is my job is to know your house more intimately than you do. Um, yeah, I, literally, you becoming the seller in that property. So like I give my, my clients form that they need to fill in and they need to write down everything and then I study this this form and that's how I need to know of course sometimes you know we miss few details because even they forgot that they've done a b c d right yeah. but again you know I'm always transparent with my buyers and I always say look if I don't know something um I will find out either on the appointment or by the end of the day so it's like you know by the end of the day they need to have the full picture um, so then they can sleep on it and make a decision, you know, based on the the, the knowledge of, uh, on, of the property. Yeah. OK, I love that. So tip one, know their house so intimately, leave no stone uncertain. Uh, yeah. That prep, 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 that will allow you to deliver a great valuation when you're out there and people are like, wow, this is different. Um, it will allow the buyers to not worry about or oh, should we offer on that one or we don't know about the schools or whatever, right? It solidifies that. <clears throat> but it gives just a great experience, right? And again, if a referral business, the amount of people when they come and go, don't worry, we've got an agent or we're sold, they have a world-class view and then go, actually, uh, is we, we'd like to use you. I know we said we had a few agents, but can you come and value our place? And it, it, yeah, it it's not so even... It's not even that like I have buyers who left my viewing and went somewhere else and call me immediately saying like they don't even like they walked into one house and they felt sick on their stomach like they like they just had a, such a good experience they don't even want to look at anything else you know and that's, that's that feedback is it's really precious because the more feedback like that you you get you know you onto something so you can just master the skill that you know people are feedback you on. Nice. Do you know, I've got a viewing on Friday for something. It's two point seven million. Wow. Uh, 
I'm thinking, am I as prepped as I should be? So I'm going to go and do some do some additional research. So, I, so I'll give you a tip here. So basically, I um, if I have a house out of area or like really high value, which, you know, a lot more goes to that house because they're more unique. I sometimes spend, and this is the advantage that I have, I think, an entire day. I can drive into an area, just walk there. So I've been achieving much higher prices than local agents outside of my area because I know the area better than the local agents when I get to receive yeah. that house because they are they a lot of agents work on autopilot so they think they already know everything so they don't do a lot of things that are necessary so you like calling other estate agents and finding out you know what they have coming to the market or what they have sold and a lot of different things you know that maybe they wouldn't think of so if i had a 2.5 million house probably you spend two three days just to research and do work yeah pure to valuation uh, oh sorry pure to um you know um sending um a proposal to client that's so good. Okay, tip two. Let's move on. What's the next one? Tip two. I've I've written down price. <laughs> so once you've done all the prep, yeah, right, then you have to have the right price to enter the market with. And a lot of the problems today is a lot of agencies out there to win a listing. So they do. Um, they they just honest with the with the sellers. They don't really think about the asset. They don't think about the client. They just think how to look good in the office. That you know I'm not, you know I'm I'm a good agent. I can I'm a good value where I can sign business. And um, so that's why we experience a lot of properties sitting on the market, um you know for ages. But also I think, um, some prices are there because. A lot of agencies cannot afford sell houses in a week. So they purposely up them to have them on the back burner so they can get, you know, rid of the ones that they're already there and then sort of, you know. I'm sure that the other ones aren't dis like, dishonest like that. I'm sure that's not the case. It's not being dishonest is 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 what I've learned in the years and, and what I was told that we need to go on evaluation and up the price so we make sure that we secure the listing so how then right so you go out and they go hey, isabel we think you're great your your preparation is is outstanding um but you're saying go on at 800 the other agent said we were going to get 925 how do you get around that oh it's it's very easy <laughs> i don't go out to win listings because i don't need listings i only sell one house at the time so I am going out to pick clients. So of course, I'm going to find out if that client is suited for me because if this client is wants to move and he's got a reason and he's serious, I'm his girl. I'll do everything to make him move. But if he is just testing the waters or he is one of those who just needs his ego you know boost so i can tell him that his house is a million pound more than the neighbors because it happens like that many times then that's not my client then i will happily give it to the agents who said it's nine whatever if the house is only worth 800 so i am honest and i will always go with the price that i believe i give clients two prices I give clients price that I'm going to go on the market at, and I give them a price that I believe I can achieve. Okay. Nice. So it's down to them to trust me in the gap that I have to deliver uh, so because that's just, what they're paying for. To say in that instance, would you go on, let's say you truly thought you could get about eight to eight, 10, what price would you go on at? Okay, I've always been saying this to agents, um, you know, that we don't really sell jam on Asda. You know, we don't price properties eight twenty-five or eight ninety-nine. It's ridiculous. There is a reason why portals work the way they work and why we have set budgets. So you always have to go on the bracket, no matter what. I mean, very rarely you would not go on the bracket very rarely if you know that the demand is there but 
the brackets are there for a reason. So I every single agent that ad, I don't use the bracket to advertise, he shouldn't be an estate agent, in my opinion. I, I do Just agree. Doesn't, I... Doesn't, or there are estate agents, but they're not salespeople. And that's the difference, you know? I always yeah. say understanding right moves you put on the market. I said, my job is like SEO. I've got to get you on page one. I've got to get your property to look very, very different compared to all the others that are going to be similar. And I've got to get people to call to action and get the phone to ring that or, or, or to click through to lead. So I see my, my job as the same as search engine optimization. That's that's one of the first things we need to do differently to the other agents. Um, and going on a price point, price descending, all the reasons behind that, uh, it just makes sense. Okay, yeah. fine. So price, you, you, you nail out you're the most prepped agent I've ever spoke to in the world. What's your third tip? Execution. <laughs> okay. Now, everything you said to that client you're going to do, because I literally mapped my client entire week and what is going to happen. And I also tell all my clients the result that they're going to get and when. And so now I have to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So how do you execute that? So, you know, when people coming on the market with me, they don't wonder what's going to happen, how long it's going to take. They know exactly what's going to happen. And, and, and if we don't achieve the price, I'll take the property off the market and I'll give it back to them. Wow. So that's huge. So you'll go, I'll get it sold within a week using my strategy. We'll yeah. do an open house day Saturday. We should have week offers by at least Wednesday. Yeah. If I don't get an offer by the Friday... No. So my houses goes on the market on Monday, yep. open houses on Saturday, Mondays are offers. So if by Monday or Tuesday, I, I've not sold, I take it off the market, give it back to the clients, give them pictures, they can go with another estate agent. What if they want to stay with you? Well, um, if they want to stay with me, I have an option when we can reduce. So we will reduce the price in that week and we'll do another open house and then it will sold after two weeks. But um, the reduction is only necessary if, so every now and then I will take on a house that I am a little bit like, mm, I don't know, because either it's hard to price. Um, and so, and sometimes I will take it just to prove the point to the next clients, to show them that, you know, this is what I proposed to the client. This is what we did. This is what was the result in the end, which means if they have listened to me at the beginning and we've done it my way, we will get a, you know, so I will do like um, a case study every now and then. And those case studies sometimes will be reduced um, within a week and sold within two weeks then. Okay. But a lot of the time, when I reduce the price, well, a lot of the times, all the times, uh, when I reduce the price, I'm actually selling it at the orig original price. Yeah. So I don't reduce them to lose value uh, because we're reducing them in the in the, in a shorter uh, span of time. And sometimes I will reduce because let's say now I'm not doing that. I used to do bank holiday um, weekend open houses. And now I'm trying to avoid that because if I don't get enough people in my open house and I have four or five people who are literally away, then I will reduce the price and go get those people back again uh, the next week. So it's not always the reason why, you know, the price is, is, is wrong still. Yeah. Right. So from an execution point of view, then you set up a weekly plan, you do everything, you make sure every single thing you say you're going to do, you hit on. The yeah. one variable you can't control of the, is the offers. If you don't get the offers, you then say, listen, we said we'd reduce it to for the following week. You reduce it on the Tuesday? Yeah. And then right. I sell it on the, the – then I have an open house on, on, on the weekend and sell it the following Monday. Yeah. Unless unless I don't have an open – I unless I have an open house the next weekend. So – very rarely I will be squeezing. I mean, there is ways around, but it's really such a tiny percentage over the last few years that I had to do that. So, yeah. Nice. I love it. Um, I think that's it because I, I, we could dive into it and go to, to so much more detail. Yeah. But I think 
preparation, price, execution is absolutely key. You've touched on something Claire touched on in the podcast last week, which is just say what, do what you say you're going to do, which I yeah. really, really like. So it's a bit of a plug for Claire's. On a curveball, you, Isabella, we didn't prep for this. No. If, uh, from your 15 years in the industry, if you would just give just one or two tips, completely, they can be off topic. It can be something that you do and you think, why don't all agents do this? Um, what have you got for us? For agents? Yeah, for agents. Anyone listen to this going, wow, this is great. And they're thinking, um, give us a, something on the cherry. Give us that, uh, that icing on top of the cake. What's just a couple of tips that you do or you've learned and you think, yeah, okay. I, should, I should share those. So the first one is if you are not interested in people, you shouldn't be in the industry because the estate agent, I don't know. Um, I don't believe that the industry is about the houses it's the house is about people you know people need houses not houses need people so it's this people's business and so people always comes first always comes first and unfortunately you know a lot of agents come into this industry because they think that there are great money to be to be made and the problem is when they focus on money some you know make money but they lose integrity they they don't cooperate they they overlook a lot of things and and they cause a lot of trouble um so i think you know people's business this is people's business so think about people first then you think about houses and then i would say um collaboration i think the era of competition should end long time i mean we should be able to collaborate i come from dubai's background where you do a lot of deals with other agents they don't have to be within your business they can be your competition and it's it's better for the for for people it's better for the industry it's better for the environment for mental health for everything for finances so i would say collaboration yeah and integrity and and remembering that it's people. Bye. 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 Bye.